building hope and opportunities with children, youth, and families. That is the vision of the Durham Children's Aid Society. Established in 1905, the Society provides a number of critical services to the community, including investigating allegations of child abuse and neglect, providing a safe, caring environment for at-risk children and youth through foster care, providing permanent and loving homes through adoption, supporting children and families through volunteer resources, helping families to provide safety and care for their children. In this video, you will hear firsthand from some of the people who are involved with the Durham Children's Aid Society and the Durham Children's Aid Foundation. Together they work in partnership with families and the community to keep children and youth safe from harm and create stability and permanence in their lives. Well, I was about nine weeks pregnant and the father of my child abused me and his mother called CAS because I was uh, abusing drugs. And uh, of course I was uh, angry at the time, uh, in denial, um, didn't really want help. Uh, but something inside me was, uh, was telling me I need help. And um, if CAS wasn't in my life, I don't think I would have had the help. Working with Melissa has been a very positive experience since I've taken on this role. Um, Melissa is inspirational in what she's been able to overcome from what um, she's been through in her life since I've, and I've, since I've met her, her dedication to her child and making her life better and dealing with everything that she has to in order to make her life better for her son is um, definitely one of the most positive experiences that I've had since working here. When my son first met uh, Krista, my worker, um, he felt comfortable around her. Um, immediately, just we were all sitting on the couch, and once he felt relaxed with her, I, I felt safe and a lot more at ease. I think that this job allows us to have a very positive impact on families and allows each worker to have the opportunity to really be a part of, of people's successes, which I think is probably the best part of the job. I've always been a good person. It's just, I guess sometimes good people make bad choices. Um, so if I can be a hopeful or inspirational to another woman, then I hope this video will help them too. Some of the challenges in this job which make it difficult are also what make it the most rewarding. We're able to really get in there and, and make differences um, and help out and, and be part of some really great things for people and ultimately really um, has, have a significant impact in their life. The society has uh, worked with my family as well to, to uh, help me stay away from drugs and um, just to better my life as a whole. He's a beautiful child, <laughs> uh, worth fighting for every second of the way and there's no way anyone can ever take him away from me again, that's, that's for sure. I feel I've been um, a success story um, for many obstacles that I've gone through to make me stronger, um, to take care of myself so I can be a better mom. Foster families have love and nurturing, but one of the biggest things I think is being able to provide a structure home environment for children who are out in the community. Um, so love is just a piece of that and you know it's perseverance, it's accepting that there's going to be challenges. Most people say, oh Patsy you work full time and how do you do this? And I, I'll say, it's a family affair. We have a support system which works well. I love to be able to be that support person. I think it's so important and I've seen so many children grow in foster care and um, it's, it's quite an amazing thing to be part of. Mom, you're the best mom in the whole world. My 11 year old said it last year and um, I thought, wow. When Chanel says, Mom, thank you for, for the values you've taught me. As long as we're there and we're committed, 
and um, as hard as it, it is, as long as our children know that we are, we are there every step of the way, I think it's really important. The kids look forward to me coming home. Kids need love, and if we give them love, it makes a lot of difference in the way they behave. The number one reason why people foster is because they want to give and they have skills and they have skills that they um, that can be utilized in our community and provide children with um, stable homes and nurturing and the everyday things that some children might not have with, within their own family environments. You can't give up. Our job and the agency's job is to help those kids reach their potential, to help them to, to um, develop independence and um, to grow up to be useful citizens, well-grounded people. Being in care is probably not the first choice for any child or parent, but my job is to make sure that it's the best experience it can be given the circumstances. I work with the children, I work with the families, and I work with service providers, foster homes, group homes, kin families, and I ensure that, that all the pieces of the puzzle come together so that they, whether it be medical, physical, assessments, or anything else that the child may need, and I, I do the best job I can to ensure that children thrive and succeed. My name is Barry and uh, I became involved in the CAS at the age of 14. I, um, my, uh, my mom actually she got uh, really sick and, and uh, I, I had to go into a foster home so but um, I, I mean ever since I've been ever since I've been in a foster home it's been a really great experience overall I've I mean I've I've been able to do so many things that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to do, and um, actually, right now I uh, I got I'm have my acceptance to college right now, which is pretty pretty cool. Over the past few years, I've seen Barry grow from a young man just entering high school who was a little unsure of himself and a little nervous about the whole experience and. He's grown into a young man who's very confident in himself and has got goals in his life. And he, he's going somewhere. He's really looking forward to the rest of his life and his enthusiasm about life is boundless. My worker Karen, she's been really, really awesome throughout the whole thing. Like she's, she's helped me in, uh, you know, a lot of tough spots. Like even when I, when I first turned 18, I was uh, having a little bit of trouble with like, uh, with, with like, handling money and, and I just didn't really know where to where to put it all and, and she helped me uh, do like a plan and and uh, now I've got it all sorted out and I will definitely most certainly have a, enough money for college now. I think my personal goal is to make sure that the kids are happy to have me as a worker and that I can do something to to make things better for them and to help them through with may, maybe something small or something big you know, it's to see the children succeed is my goal. Even in the toughest times, um, you know, them having so many foster kids, they've always been able to, you know, they've always been able to help me out with, with whatever I needed or if I really needed someone to talk to, they've always been there. It's been a lifelong dream. I've known since a young girl that I would adopt and I ended up adopting two lovely children, a brother and sister. They're the best things that have ever happened to me in my life. When you're adopted, things are a bit different and just to have a, fa a family that you can call forever family is really cool. It has had an amazing impact on my life because I am proud to say that I'm a father of these two beautiful adopted children. Well, it's totally cool and my sister and I like it better than what we had before, so we didn't really get to do a lot of fun stuff. Well, it was kind of different, I guess, because we went to home from home, and then when we were put into a foster home, we didn't know it was a foster home. And then two and a half years later, we were adopted, and we didn't know what adopted was. We didn't know what adopted meant. So all in one week, we learned what adopted was, like what adopted meant, and that we were adopted. So then we moved in here, and it was quite different, because like I can rem remember most of it and 
I remember that we were really excited and then my little brother was still kind of confused about it and it was a lot of fun just moving in. So Durham CAS has provided so much service. Our personal adoption worker Robert has been wonderful. He has provided so many um, pieces of advice. I'm actually honoured to be part of Durham CAS and working with uh, the families and, and getting to see the kids grow and change. Our family relationship with CAS is very excellent. The support that they have shown us right from day one when we first made the application to adopt children, right through to even today, that anytime we have questions we can phone them up or email and we can get the support that we need through through our caseworker, through the family workers, through everybody. The help and the experience and, and the knowledge is there and it makes it very friendly to deal with them. Working with Carol and Steve, they have persevered and the children have done wonderful in their home. We like to go skiing in the winter and we like to go on the trailer in the summer and then we have great times. As an adoption social worker, I'm looking for homes for the kids that are in uh, the foster care system. So first and foremost, they need to know this is a life journey. We are creating permanence for the children that are in the child welfare system. Our families are um, a great big advocacy regarding adoption, that it shouldn't be hidden behind closed doors, that it's something that's normal in anyone's lives. And our family is just as normal as anyone else. Everyone in our community, in our society, has a responsibility to ensure the safety and well-being of children. The Children's Aid Society plays a really important role in that, and we're unique in that under the legislation, the Child and Family Services Act, we have a legal responsibility to ensure the safety, well-being, and protection of children. Most of the work that we do with families and children, we do with children in their own family homes. Probably about 90% of, of the kids that we work with are in their own family homes. Um, however, those children who have to come into care, we do work very hard to get those kids back to their families as soon as possible. If a child is not able to return home, we work very hard to find a permanent home for those children. And there we look for families in our community who are interested in adopting children. We are very fortunate that we have many families who are looking to have children become part of their own families through adoption. Oftentimes, Children's Aid Societies is seen as a last resort for children and families. Uh, they're often scared, they're often angry, frustrated, they're, they've run out of options. But really, when I think about Children's Aid Society, it's not a last resort, but really it's an opportunity for a new beginning and a chance at a better life. When you think of all of the needs for these kids, the government really covers the basic needs of the children. We pick up where they leave off. A lot of those things uh, have to do with uh, emergency medical or dental care, uh, uh, above and beyond what OHIP covers, um, as well as recreational activities. Uh, we send over 300 kids to camp every year, uh, and we provide bursaries to those children who against all odds have essentially uh, gotten through uh, high school and now are going to post-secondary education. When I think about my own children and I think about if something was to happen where I wasn't there uh, to support them, if I wasn't there to, to encourage them to develop and grow into, into an outstanding adult, uh, who would? Right? And when you really start to think about the needs of these children and you start to understand uh, what the risks are, I think not only do we have a responsibility to get involved, it's the right thing to do. We're very fortunate to live in such a wonderful community like Durham Region. Most people that live here will tell you that it's a great place to live, it's safe, it's a great place to raise your kids. However, most people are very surprised when they find out about all the kids at risk in Durham. It never ceases to amaze me the support that we get from the community from individuals coming in during the holiday season and dropping off gifts or gift certificates or, or, or money uh, to a lot of the corporations and the small and medium sized businesses right here in Durham. Um, the support is phenomenal. Year after year, people are getting involved and it's such a great cause, how could you not? We have wonderful volunteers that work to support our programs. 
We, they work in many, many capacities, including special friends to children, tutors, drivers, our volunteer boards. Without volunteers, we would not be able to do the work that we do so well. These children need to know that there are people in the community that care if they're safe, that care if they're happy, that care if they succeed. And I think once you understand the cause and you understand the need, you can't help but get involved with the Foundation. The well-being of our children is a community responsibility. If you would like more information on the Durham Children's Aid Society and the Durham Children's Aid Foundation, including how you can get involved, please call us at 1-800-461-8140 or visit us online at durhamcas.ca.